Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. God bless us all. Sorry for the time. It seems a little bit too late. Please, if you are valuable, you know, you are less busy, you can join me tonight for the word of God. Mm -hmm. As you join, revive, prove, mm -hmm. Share who you'll be able to share to. And as you do so, I pray God Almighty we bless and enrich you in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly today, we will not to, we not spend much time because of other assignment that is ahead for me to go through as well. Amen. Shall we bow down our head? Let's glorify the name of the Lord for the privilege to be counted among the living, for bringing us again to this, to do, to study His Word. Let's give God all the glory. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Elohim, we adore you. I do now. We give you glory. Thank you for your wonderful work. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for grace. Thank you for compassion. Thank you for mm -hmm. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you for your lifting. Thank you for turnaround. Thank you for promotion. No one like you, Father, not to be compared to you. Honor you, adore you, Father. From ages to ages, you remain the same God. That the unchangeable God, the God I've never feared. The one who never sleeps nor slumber. The Redeemer and the Savior of our life, the Bishop of our soul. Father, we honor you, we glorify you. See, may your name be exalted forever in the name of Jesus Christ, O God of mercy. We ask for mercy. Can you show us mercy? Any way that we have wronged you, any way we have mm -hmm. sinned against you. See, by action, by our words, our thoughts, Father, we ask for mercy. O God, our Father, we pray for mercy. We ask that you show us mercy, Lord. Show us mercy. In the multitude of your mercy, Father, may you show us mercy tonight in the name of Jesus. Anything that will hinder us not to be blessed by your word tonight, Lord, we pray that you take it away from us in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you give us understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. Help us, Father, to understand your word and give us the grace to be a practitioner of your word. Grace to put your word to practice. Father, grace to be example of your word, to live by your word, to act by your word. We ask for that grace, Father. May you release that grace upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask for abundant grace. Your grace is enough for us, O oh God. We ask for your sufficient grace in the name of Jesus. We pray for grace, O oh God. Grace, Father, grace upon grace. Give us grace, Father, to follow. Your abundant grace to follow, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we silence every principalities and powers, whatever contrary spirit, contrary power. I want to rise up. Every evil imagination that want to exalt his knowledge above the knowledge of God we will put them under captivity now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O God, our Father, and every storm that want to rise against your word, we silence it now in the name of Jesus. Every contrary power, contrary spirit that want to contradict the knowledge of the truth, Father, by your mercies and by your mighty hands, we command those forces be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Whatever that will stop your war not to manifest in our life, not to be effective in our life. Father, by the power in the name of Jesus, we command those souls be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, Father, Holy Spirit of God, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. You are our great teacher, our comfort, our guide, our advocate. Holy Spirit of God, we ask for your help. We need your help. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us to know and to do the way of the Father. Mm -hmm. To us, Holy Spirit of God, Holy Ghost, reveal more of the way of the Father to us in the name of Jesus. We pray for understanding, we pray for understanding, we pray for understanding heart, pray for understanding heart, we 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 pray for understanding heart, understanding heart, Father, grant us understanding heart, Holy Spirit of God, we ask for understanding heart. In the name of Jesus, give us understanding heart as we look into your word, Father. 
May you bless us by your word. May you visit us by your word. May you change our story by your word. May you enlighten us by your word. May you teach us by your word. Teach us your word and the way that we should go, Father, the way to follow. In the name of Jesus, help us, Father. Help us, mighty God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, Abba, Father. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Have your way. Father, may you have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit of God. Have your way, Father. Have your way. Have your way in our midst. Let your name be glorified in our midst. Glorify yourself, O God, our Father, in our midst. We ask that you glorify yourself in our midst. Every secret for the Lord help us. Who can understand his errors? Christ us, O God, from every secret for In the name of Jesus. Who is that man, that woman that can understand his error? Cleanse us, O God, our Father, from every secret fault. In the name of Jesus. Cleanse us, Father, from every secret fault, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Father. Help us to do and live according to your word. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for open heaven. Let heaven over us be open. Whatever has shot the heaven over us, Father, by mercy, we pray that those things be removed and let the heaven over us be open. In the name of Jesus, let your blessing be released. Let there be a release of the supernatural. Let your healing power flow. That sickness that want to keep us in that bed for us not to be partaker of the blessings of your word. We command that sickness now be destroyed by the power in the name of Jesus. Let your word destroy every form of sickness, every form of affliction in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit of God, as I touch my mouth with the coal of fire, who fought the word of the Lord in my mouth. May you touch my mouth, Lord, with your hands. Lay your hands on me, Lord. Who fought your word in my mouth? Help me not to speak of my own, but to speak according to the leading of your spirit, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I can of my own do nothing. The word is your own. Is your will, Father? Let your will be done. I have no word of my own. I have can of my own do nothing, Father. I ask for your help. I ask for your help. Thank you, glorious God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, therefore, we declare today's session of the word. Be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for open heaven, Lord. Therefore, let the service for the world be open. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shalom, brethren. God bless you. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, mothers, fathers, uncle, auntie. All and all brethren in the Lord. I bring season greeting and glorious greeting to you all the way from my domain. I, on behalf of my family, extend my greetings to everyone and i pray that the good lord have kept us preserve us to this moment we keep protecting us and preserving our life from every evil in this world in the name of jesus christ quickly we are still on the foundation that we have working on working on the foundation the foundation of a believer so yesterday we we are able to look in in the area of the foundation of the world which is the word of god as a foundation of every believer. So any believer that must grow, we said, as young babe in first Peter 2, verse number 2, as young babe that we should desire the systemic, the pure milk of the world, so that we may be able to grow. So as believers in the Lord, mind you, is not by your age gender. Your growth in the things of God is not by your age gender. It is by how you follow and when you started following genuinely in holiness and in righteousness. If you started some years ago along the way you backslided, so which means you have started afresh again. The ladder has been removed, starting afresh to climb the ladder again. So it's not how where, uh, how long rather, it is how where. How where have we been in the things of God? If you have not given your life to Christ, it's time for you to do so because the time is short and the ark should be closed, which means rapture will soon take place. So, you have no excuse. That is why God has made everything available through the internet, social media, and all, so that no one will be without excuse that this is the reason I did not hear your word. That is why I did not know what was written. But through internet, social media, and all, God has made everything easier. Even bringing it to your doubles. <laughs> You can even relax on your bed, relax on your chair, and be hearing the word of God in the place where you relax. So everyone is without excuse this season. So don't be exempted. Be aware 
that the kingdom of God, which is the heaven judgment, is about to come. So the question is, if you stand now, where will you go? Where will I go? Where will you spend your eternity? Are you going to heaven or you are going to hell? This is a question you have to ask yourself if you are a believer. And if you are not a believer, it's a question you still need to ask yourself. As I have not known Christ, I have not received Christ. If I die now, where is my soul going? Automatically, it's hell because you don't know Christ. So long you don't know Christ Jesus the way, which means heaven is not for you as a non-believer. So you have to embrace Jesus now. So that when you die, you will be rest assured, having the full confidence that yes, your heaven is secure if you walk in holiness and in righteousness. So for those of us who are already in the faith, if you die now, where will you go? It's a question you have to ask yourself. If your path is not pure, which is keeping the path of holiness and righteousness, if you die, forget about heaven. So it is my advice you and admonish you each and every one of us that we should choose, no matter what it takes, to walk in the path of holiness and righteousness as a believer. Otherwise, anyone who dies in sin is hellfire streets. There is nothing two ways about it. You will just on your own know now, have it at the back of your mind. That if you play rough play now, and you die in that rough play, rough play, which is sin, hellfire, no heaven. So only those who keep the path of purity will be allowed to access heaven on the last day. I pray that God will release his abundant grace upon us to stay in the path of purity in the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, we'll look into the word of God as the foundation of every believer. The standard of every believer is rooted in the word of God. So the word of God is the foundation. If you must grow roots, roots to anywhere, it should be the word of God. That is the anchor of every believer's life. Every Christian's anchor is the word of God, not the word of men. The word of men will not take you to heaven. Only the word of God that will walk will take us to heaven. The word of God we hold in our hand and we walk with determines our word in heaven. If we hold the word of God and we walk with it in on, on righteousness with sin, forget about heaven self. Heaven is too far. Only those who walk with the word, obey the word in holiness, in righteousness, are entitled to make heaven. I pray God will help our understanding in the name of Jesus. So the word of God has many functions in the life of a believer. As we desire, as a young babies, we desire the sincere milk of the pure milk of the world. In order for us to grow, so first, uh, Peter 2 verse 2. So as we as believers, we need the word of God. And the word of God have many functions, roles to play in our life. So we'll be looking at a few things about the role that the word of God will play in our life. Stop running after, running after prophecy. Stop running after miracles, signs and wonders. Those things are good. But when you receive them, you need something to maintain those things you have received. And what is that thing? The word of God being held in a pure conscience of holiness and of righteousness. That is the thing that will retain that your miracle, that your signs, or your wonders you are searching for. Mm -hmm. And mind you, signs and wonders will not take you to heaven. It's only your righteousness and the word of God you hold in mm -hmm. purity that will take you to heaven. Uh, tongues will pass away. Prophecy will come and go. Signs and wonders will come and go. Everything you think you are enjoying now, they will come and go. The only thing that will stand is the word of God. The word of God is infallible. It doesn't fade away. It is pure and is a sure word. That is the only thing that can help you and I to make heaven if we hold it with pure conscience of purity, holiness. Aside that, no heaven. That is why Jesus said in Luke 21 verse 33, and the city was also recorded in Matthew 24 verse 35, that heaven and earth will come and pass away, but no judge of his word will go away. The world will stand still. But after rapture, after rapture, no mercy 
mercy will not be upon the earth anymore. No grace. So it's better you think wise now, get wisdom. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's look at the functions of the word of God, what the, the word of God do in our life. Like I read, we read from John 6, verse 63 to 68. When Jesus said, the flesh profit nothing, but the word I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. And he asked the twelve apostle disciples, now that the multitude have gone away from me because of the hard word they heard, will you also go away? Peter responded in that, uh, John 6, verse 68 of it. He said, where shall we go? For you have the word of eternal life, which means the word of God carry the spirit and eternal life. Anyone who has this word of God in him or her, in a pure conscience of holiness and righteousness, so eternity in heaven with Christ is sure for you. There is no, no doubt because the word of God gives eternal life. The functions of God, what God's word is to grant you eternal life, made you a spirit being, no longer living in the flesh or tossed about by miracles, signs and wonders, by magic that you see some people performing. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. No wonder the word of God is medicinal for healing and deliverance. So the deliverance virtue is in the word of God. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, God sent his word. He did not go anywhere. God remained in heaven, remained in his truth. But he sent his word. That word is sent. He who has made that we are sick, who have embraced the word. And deliver those who are under captivity and oppression any destruction they were delivered by that sent word so they say sent word is what i'm realizing to your hearing now so if you can embrace it with faith then if there's anything sickness in your life you will also receive your healing now not tomorrow now if you are hearing the word the world have the capacity to heal you because jesus is that word and once you receive it with faith you receive your healing are you in any bondage or whatever if you receive the word now with faith in a pure heart, in holiness and in righteousness, the world is able to also deliver you from that bondage, to set you free from that prison. Is it court case? The world is able to grant you freedom from that court case. Are you in any prison? Have you been in prison because of one or two crimes, or you committed or you did not commit it? The word of God is still able to set you free from that prison. So all you need to do now is to receive the word with joyfulness of heart. Rejoice in your heart in holiness and in righteousness. Embrace the word. Then you will see the power behind the word. So the word of God is dimensional weapon. You can use it to fight any battle. Because it's too extra. Hebrews 4 verse 12. It said the word of God is quick, is powerful, is lively, is a living. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. So the word of God is able to cut whatever that is not of God in your life because it's a quick something. The only quick weapon you can use to defeat Satan, to defeat that challenge, to overcome that issue of concern that has been with you for years, is holding the word of God in pure conscience, in holiness and in righteousness and begin to declare it. Like one of our preachers who keeps saying it, don't stop talking it, keep saying it, don't stop talking it. You keep professing the word. So the word of God is prophetic. You that need prophecy, you neglect the word. What you, see, you will see is satanic prophecy. So if you need true and genuine prophecy, then go to the word. The word of God lies all the prophecy that you need. That I see the kind of pants you are wearing, I know your house, I know your address. That kind of prophecy will not take you to heaven. I read your account number for you, read your phone number for you. That kind of prophecy will not take you to heaven. The genuine prophecy that will take you to heaven is the prophecy of the word of God. The prophecy of the word of God. That is why the word of God says in Revelation, He said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What is that testimony? The word. The word. The testimony of Jesus. Revelation 19 is the spirit of testimony. And the um, testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy rather. The testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is the spirit of prophecy. Is it prophecy that you need? Then go to the word. The word of God is a weapon. Know that. Jeremiah 23 verse 29. He said, It's my word, not a fire. 
So the word of God has ability to burn down whatever that is not of God in your life. If you hold and embrace the war with faith in holiness and in righteousness. That official, the war can search through you and burn it, melt it away. You will search for it, you will not see it again. Because the word of God has penetrated to you. Because the spirit of God is behind his word. God is his word. It's not different from his word. You can't separate God from his word. Is my word not like a hammer? That Jeremiah 23 verse 29. That break a rock into pieces. What is that ever going in your life? What is that obstacle that is holding you captive for years? If you can embrace the word of God now with faith, in holiness and in righteousness, that matter will be destroyed. Because the word of God has the capacity and the ability to destroy it for you. That prison will be broken. That chain of affliction, that bondage will be destroyed by that same word of God. So this is what we need as a believer. Our foundation, our anchor is God's word. Not the earth, but God's word. Remember in Psalm 119 verse 105, it says, The word is a light unto my feet, a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. What do light do to give you clear direction? So the word of God is able to direct us as believers. The word of God is what we need. We, we out of ignorance, looking for prophecy, looking for signs and wonder. Those things are good, but those are secondary, not primary. Because you, God, have already made the signs and wonder. In Isaiah 8, 18, say, I and the children whom the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and we are for wonders. So when you embrace the word in spirit and in truth, the signs and wonders begin to manifest. Come to look at it. In Mark 16, verse 17, the same way I'm preaching now, 17, 18, they went everywhere preaching the word of God. And God was confirming his word with signs and wonders following. So if you need signs and wonders, why don't you embrace the word that you are hearing now? Embrace the word. Then you will get the signs and wonders you are looking for, the miracle. But you want a prophet to tell you how you grew up, how you were born, how you were that. The word of God is still able to reveal to you how you were born. God will reveal the what God reveals to you is even more better than what man reveals to you because man can take it from wrong source to reveal it to you. But what God reveals to you by your own self, you sleep or you dream or in trance, God reveals it to you. It's more pure than the one a man reveals to you. I'm not saying that I know men that are doing what is really the pure one, but in this generation, it's rare to see only few, and those few are rare. Can't find them just like that. So if I wash my eye, look at you, tell you your background, everything, you will be saying, "Yeah, man of God, right on, right on, right on, man of God, it's true, man of God, it's true, man of God." Then after all the c c c c c c c, what about the solution? Your life have not even still changed. You still remain in the same condition. What does that mean? After all the c c c c c c c, still remain in the condition. So it's time you have sense. Get wisdom, get understanding, then you will be delivered from that captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God refreshes the soul of anyone who embraces the word. The word of God refreshes the soul of anyone who embraces the word. Let me open the Bible so that you not look as if I'm just speaking it from my own mouth. The word of God refreshes the soul of anyone who embraces the word. It refreshes how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. That is what the psalm is saying. It's 119 verse 103. Let's see what the word of God do for young, young, a young man and a young woman like us, who sin of uh, fornication want to head captive. That sin want to keep in one position, in that bondage. This is the word of God that is able to help you out. By the, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I believe the Lord will give you an answer of peace that you are seeking for to die your problem in the name of Jesus. God will provide provide solution to die your problem through His Word in the name of Jesus. Psalm 119, I read from verse 7, I will praise you with, all, with uprightness of heart. Uprightness of heart. Now we sing, I will praise you with uprightness of heart. Psalm 119, verse 7, beginning. When I learn your righteous judgment. Verse 8, he said, I will keep your status. What is the status? 
this word commandment oh do not forsake me utterly because i choose to keep your commandment because i refuse to put my hand in hurting to make money i refuse to go and do street work sometimes we want to use excuses to justify our sin instead of us to admit our sin and ask god for mercy I want to justify it because my family background nobody is rich i was not able to be trained to school i could easily only you that is facing the problem and you are in europe and no house no place no work nothing nothing that is why i enter street that is why you are doing yahoo that is why you are carrying drugs is you only you that is in europe it's because you are greedy you want to make money sharp sharp there are evil some even they are receiving assistance from the government and yet they are doing street work standing on the road as a prostitute why some are carrying drugs some are doing evil mamanyash gay and all you want to give excuse it's because no job no work no this no it's because you choose to do it that way what is happening to you is happening to everybody around the world across the world everybody is facing the same heat not only you so if you want to uh, excuse yourself with excuses of a uh, no work no this no that that is why you are committing sin wait for your judgment day that judgment day you will not be permitted to give excuse that is why the word of god was revealed in Romans 1 verse 20, the things that were invisible, God made them visible so that no one will be without excuse, saying this is the reason why I could not keep your word, I didn't hear, I do this, I do that, or this or that. No. On that day of judgment, no excuse. If you are away, it's not right. And you die in it without making it right. Have fire straight, so just put your house in order. You that is still rejoicing in doing flood. You are duping people, you are happy, you are rejoicing over it, that you are building houses. All those houses you are building will grow wings and fly away. What about your soul? You will not go to hell. So don't you, it's time you learn, learn sense. Learn sense, get wisdom, get understanding. Get understanding before it will be too late with you. If you die in it now, have fire straight. Nobody can negotiate it for you. It is only when you are alive you can make negotiation now. After death, you can't negotiate your judgment. You, as you are alive now, you can make negotiation of your judgment where your soul will go. By repentance. Genuine repentance. Not eyes, seeming, camouflage, pretense repentance. No. Genuine repentance. That is the only way you can make negotiation for your soul now. Because you are still alive. Only those who are alive... Uh, have access to repentance once you die no more repentance only those who are alive have access to the word of god and once you die the word of god is no more for you so if you die in your sin now you already know where you are sold your soul to have fire everlasting torment the worm does not die the fire does not quench no water nothing this uh, uh, terrestrial body you are taking maybe your satan want to rob you is telling you no more heaven again if you die, that is when your heaven starts. Who told you? When you die, your soul will live. And this is your container, which is dust, the fresh. You are maintaining. You will rob all manner of robbers, robbing your, uh, your your body, leading your soul to hell. It will, the, the dust will be the one to separate from you immediately. It will separate. It will leave you behind and go back to dust. That is where it came from. This fresh container came from the dust. So don't be so. Uh, proud or so carrying yourself about the dust you are carrying because you will return to dust you are dust we are dust is the soul that is inside us and makes this fresh to look nice so once you allow this your flesh to lead your soul to hell you will face the consequences eh? you will not like what you will see because her fire was never meant for human being it was reversed for satan or satan say we war to make sure you drag many along and you now you even voluntarily give yourself to satan Voluntarily, without Satan, he did not even call you. you. Voluntarily give yourself to Satan because you want to make money. You want to make money, you want to make fame, you want to make name. You voluntarily give yourself to Satan. It will carry the soul back into hell because you gave it free of charge without price. I pray that God will help understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 119, verse 8 9 say, I will keep your status. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Verse 9. I can a, this is where I'm going. How can a young man cleanse his way? You are a believer. You just gave your life to Christ yesterday or last month or last year or even now. 
as I'm as you are hearing my word, my message of the Lord now, you realize you have been made a mistake all this while. Now you have returned to Christ, you have surrendered to God totally. <coughs> You surrender to God <clears throat> totally. The question now is, how can you not cleanse yourself? Keep the path of holiness, righteousness, to live a purified life. So this scripture is for you. <coughs> Excuse me. How can a young man cleanse his... And the response that is the question is... How can a young man cleanse his ways? Psalm 119, verse 9. You have given your life to Christ as a young man, a young girl, a young boy. How can I cleanse my way to make sure I walk in the path of holiness and righteousness without deviation? It's a question. And the answer was also given so that you will say ah, well, there was no answer. The answer is by taking heed according to the word of God. By listening to the word of God and doing it, by studying the word of God and putting it to practice, by so doing, you will cleanse your way from every uncleanness, every unrighteousness, filthiness. Because the word of God is your guide. Whatever he tells you to do, you do. And whatever he tells you not to do, you will not do. That is why Isaiah 30 verse 22 says, Though God will give you the bread of advance, it will give you water of affliction. But he will not take your teacher away from you. No, your teacher will be put to one corner anymore. You see, you will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Come out of that way that leads to hell. Even those of you doing fraud here, yeah. those of you doing prostitution, those of you with all kinds of manner of sins, you will not tell me that there is no day you have not heard a word behind you saying this thing you are doing is not the right thing. Inside you, you have a peace, still voice, your conscience telling you this way will lead you to hell. And Satan will tell you, forget it, you want to die in poverty, rejoice, come on, friends. Flesh with what? What is in this world that you want to flesh? How many hours do you have a day? Can you extend your 24 hours a day? Because you want to flesh, you, can you be able to extend your 24 hours? To make it 40, 48 hours a day will now become 48 hours. You cannot. So what makes you think that there is a judgment you want to enjoy here? Even the enjoyment you think you enjoy is not even comparable to the enjoyment that is in heaven. Because here you labor, you are not even in peace. Your mind is not at rest. But in heaven, you are in peace. Your mind is at rest. So why don't you, it's better you suffer now than enjoy later. Than to enjoy now and suffer later. That is everlasting suffering. Everlasting suffering and everlasting enjoyment. So choose, which one will you follow? Is it the everlasting suffering or the everlasting enjoyment? It is time you make decision, make choice. Do you have two belly? Do you have two stomach that you want to eat and eat and eat? You go to a manner of club, you call it high life. High life, high, high in your way to hell fire. Repent for me, come down from that high life way. Because it's a way of destruction. That is why Proverbs 14 says, There is a way that looks right to a man, but the end of it is a way of death, destruction. When you die in that high life you thought is high life, it will take you to hell fire street. And that hell fire, there is no end. But this earth you are, life has end, it has expiring dates. Once the validity date comes, you answer, you go. You don't mm. waste time. You, still to trade. you are a trader. You are true with your business. So go and return and settle your course with God, either heaven or hell. So it's choice now to choose where you are going. The reason why we are to prepare at all times because you don't know when your call will sound. You have saw somebody yesterday, but today you receive another news that the person is dead. Somebody who you spoke with yesterday. Even somebody who you eat together with yesterday, today you receive a call that this person is dead. So that one never reach you to get sense. That one don't reach you to learn sense. You suppose don't get sense. Say, I said they happen so now. So me to go still take go, and I don't know the day. Since you don't know the day, you go live prepared. That is just it. The only solution to it, since you don't know the day, is to live prepared. Be righteous. Keep your path holy and righteous at all times. Live prepared. Because you don't know when. You are alive now by mercy. Don't think you are receiving those things because you are smart. Some say, uh, I, my, I just pray to God. I'm talking to those who are the in faith now. I ask God for this and I believe God. I have faith in God and the thing come to pass. And you will look somebody saying, I have faith in God. 
you are doing prostitution, you say you have faith in God. No sinner has faith. Anyone that is living in sin, committing sin, he doesn't have faith. What you, what you receive was mercy. It was mercy that delivered those things to you. Not you have faith in God because you don't have faith. What did the word of God say? The just shall live by faith. Who are the just? The righteous. So if you are walking in sin, you don't have faith. It is mercy that speaks for you. And mind you, that mercy will not really speak for you forever. Don't think the mercy will be there forever. If you do not repent now, the mercy will be taken away from you. God forbid. And once the mercy is taken away, you do it again, not dead too. Then you go and settle your cause with Satan. The Lucifer in hell. So, wise. Wise up. Learn sense. Have sense. Common sense is not common. Some will say this common sense. Common sense is not common. If it is common, you will have no what to do. I pray God will help you understand in the name of Jesus. So if you want to cleanse your way, you must uh, take heed according to the word of God. With all your heart. Not with eye service. You want somebody to see you. No, with all your heart. You have to sort your God. Let me not wander from your commandments. This is a prayer. Let me not wander away from your commandment, which is his word. Any man that wander away from the word of God, whether you are a pope, or whether you are an apostle, whether you are a bishop or archbishop or whatever, whatever, so long you have wandered away from God's commandment, if you die, you go to hell. It's just too simple. That is the prayer you always pray. For you not to wander away from the commandment of God. Once you have wandered away, you are now walking on your own. The gift of God that he gave to you is without repentance. It will still be working for you. We think you are working for God. Already you are working for Satan. If you know your secret life, you are committing sin. You are doing what is wrong. And you are still, the gift that God gave to you is still working. You, you still hear, you still perform miracle, all manner of thing. After sleeping with somebody's wife, you still perform miracle. After, after kidnapping somebody's daughter, you still perform miracle. <laughs> Just know that it's Satan that is using that your gift to operate. And he's using it for his own credit. And at the end, if you die in it, you go to hell. So let's learn lesson here. Let's be wise. Be wise. These are the tactics of Satan. The scheme of Satan. Satan has no power, but he has tactics, tricks. Can trick you to use you to fight your own self by yourself. That is how Satan operates. He has tricks. He has no power. He has tricks. He doesn't have power. When you say somebody shoot arrow, the arrow enter. It's because the person way is not that they see a an space that has been open to such arrow. But when you secure your life with holiness and righteousness, your righteousness will fight for you and it will give you victory. Pray God will help understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Set the Lord with all his commandments and ask God, I don't want to deviate from your commandment. Verse 11, Psalm 119. He said, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. We sang this song, we sing this song, yet. We have not really heed the word according to our song in our heart. If you are still committing sin, well, where, where is the word you have hidden in your heart? Living with a man, a woman, and you are not married. You travel, transaction, transaction, anytime, any day of your choice. And you come out and be singing in church. Satan will be rejoicing in your song, not God. You are Because you are singing on the ground of unholiness. It's Satan that is rejoicing. You are not seeing altar today. Many defy altar. The fire will be quenched. They will be jumping and be singing. And Satan will be rejoicing in their song. They think it's God. And they will go to the essence by crying, which is emotional cry. Taking his anointing. Some will be crying. Oh, these people are blind. I'm leading them to hell. They are not aware. Because you just return from bed of fornication. And you carry my microphone and be singing and be jumping. You can't deceive God. You can't deceive Satan. You can only deceive human. And there is essence you can deceive human. You will get to know that your way of life is just deception. <laughs> I pray God will help our understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. Now, the functions of the word of God is to help us to keep the path of holiness and righteousness. Cleanses us from every unrighteousness, the word of God. When we keep the word of God, hacking to the commandment of God and doing it. If the angels, it's a one o three. Verse 20, bless the Lord his angel that has said his strength. The hacking to the commandment of God and obeying his word. Angels, how much more you and I who are created in the image of God. 
So we are much more expected to hack into God's word and work in it. So the fun another function of God's word is to wash us from every sin. So when you put the word of God outside, it will not wash you from any sin. But when you always stay close to the word of God, it wash you from every sin. Stay close to it. Keep the company of people who discuss about holiness and righteousness. If you want to really be living a life of holiness and righteousness. You can't keep a company of fornicators and expect your own self to be holy. It's not possible. You can't keep the company of drunkards, smokers and expect yourself to be holy. It's not possible. You can't keep the company of frosters and expect yourself to be holy. It's not possible for you. So you separate yourself from such a thing. Then you'll be able to keep that part of holiness and righteousness. In Ephesians 5 verse 26, he said, He might sanctify. Now, this is about uh, uh, Christ talking about Jesus. He must sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word. Verse 27, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So Satan will put the mindset in the mind of the young uh, believers because they are not uh, yet, yet grow deeper in the teeth of God. But the issue is that because of pride, no one will want to accept. will be arguing the word of God. It's not possible to be holy. But the word of God says here now, through his word, it will satisfy you, make you holy and blemish, present a glorious church before his coming. Are we really preparing ourselves as a glorious church to be holy and blameless before the coming of the Son of Man? Only a few churches are doing that, preparing their soul now, awaiting the Son of Man to come. Or many, they are after your car, your marriage, what you will buy, what you will this, your body, you put all manner of things. But you are not interested in your soul. And you say you are a Christian. If you are a Christian, you are not interested in your soul. If you die now, you go to hell. If you are a Christian, you are not interested about your soul. If you die now, you go to hell. No tea about judge or uh, condemn. No. It is the standard of God's word. Who died in sin, there is no heaven for such person. So you should be more concerned about your soul. The essence of church, this is the pain that God has put in me. I don't know every day. I keep crying, shedding tears. The essence of church is to bring the sinners out of sin, purify them, prepare them for the coming of the Son of Man. But unfortunately, it has become reverse the case. Reverse is the case now. No one is even concerned about where the soul will go. We are concerned about where our body will go. You are concerned about miracle bank alert. Miracle bank alert will not take you to heaven. Miracle, miracle bank alert will not take us to heaven. Miracle key, miracle car, miracle this, miracle that, miracle husband, miracle wife, miracle children, miracle, 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 miracle this, miracle that, miracle this, mir all these things are good, but these things cannot take us to heaven. It is our holiness and our righteousness that will take us to heaven. If you like, marry one wife, born one child, if you do not keep the part of holiness and righteousness and you die, you go to hell. If you like, be an apostle, be a bishop, be a bishop, whatever, whatever. If you die in his sin, his hell fire straight. God is not partial. He will not tell you you have a two million capacity or whatever, whatever. That now you die in sin, you welcome, you go to a heaven. No. You die in sin, you go to hell. If you come and tell Jesus, I, I gather billions of people are waiting for you. He will tell you, go away from me. I don't know you. You walk out of iniquity. The worst aspect of it now is this. Billions gathered among the billions that gather. Are we interested about their soul or about their body? Invest much on our body. Heavy investment on our body. But our soul, not until a single investment. And we are starting, we are a Christian, we want to make heaven on the last day. It's far. It's time we learn sense now. These are the trick of the devil that the devil is using to rob the children of God. Gathering multitude to hell. But I pray that God will open our eyes of understanding. Our eyes of understanding shall be enlightened tonight in the name of Jesus. The word of God sanctifies and purify us. Remember when Satan came to tell Jesus, turn this stone to bread. What did he say? Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4. He recorded the account. He said to Satan, get behind me. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But this generation, we don't want to hear the pure word of God. We don't want to hear the genuine word of God. All we want to hear, you are blessed in the morning, you are blessed in the night. 
What about you come out from your sin? If you die in it, you, are, you go to hell. You are living with a man that is not married to you. And you are rejoicing, committing sin of fornication. Leave that bed of fornication. Otherwise, if you die, you go to hell. Don't want to hear that message. Want to hear the message of you receive bank alert. You receive miracle, miracle wife, miracle woman, miracle. All these miracle wife, miracle woman. When God created all these things, we are added to man. It's free. It's nothing that you should pray for. It's nothing that you should seek for. What we need to seek for is our soul on the path of righteousness and holiness. All those things will be added. That is why Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first. You should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added. But we live in a generation whereby the, the quotation is they remove the righteousness. I don't know where they kept it. It's either in their pocket or their wardrobe or they are sat upon that righteousness. It's not the message of seek the kingdom of God and every other thing, riches and wealth will be added. The righteousness will be this garbage away. When Jesus will return, he will ask you what about that part. Go and find it. Go and bring it. You, you took it away from the church. That is why Lucifer, Marie took over that altar. Somebody who's no, whose who's way is not righteous, you know very well. You know very well. A drunkard, a smoker, a fornicator, a daughter. You know very well. You give the person position in church. The judgment of God is awaiting. You repent now before it is too late. God is so angry. Defy the altar of God. God is so angry. If you know that I am indulging in those things, living a life of fornicator, still living a street life, I want to give me position in the church just to keep me and call me your member. You want to, don't want to lose member. Don't worry. You don't want to lose member, but you will lose your soul. You don't want to lose member, but be ready to lose your soul. It's very simple. The member, if it is you are preparing their soul, you will not be afraid not to lose. Because the member are not your own. You own nobody. No one, any soul, nobody is your own. So why are you afraid? I say, I don't want to lose member. You are burning the truth. Twisting the truth. You say, I, I, your gift your gift is what matters. When you are committing fornication, you are still jumping the altar. The vengeance of God is coming. And once, that, no wonder I said, the anger of God, the judgment of God will first of all start from the church. So if those in the church could not survive the judgment, the anger, how much more those in the world? Which means they will not even be able to even smell it at all. It's time we wake up. Going to church is not a party. Live in a generation whereby you no longer know who is going to a uh, roadside, who is going to a disco party, and who is going to church. No longer differentiate. I will tell you, God did not come for the righteous. Jesus did not die for the righteous. He died for the sinner. Does he die for the sinner to remain in their sin? Ask yourself that question. Don't let anyone brainwash you anymore. It is your soul. It is your soul. Whether you are a husband or you are a wife, your fingerprint is your fingerprint. They cannot say your husband and wife they journey together. Your pastor, your pastor. On that day, many will use pastors as their excuse. And the funniest thing, the one who marry has sold their souls to Satan, they want to drag some innocent pastor to their own sin. You are committing fornication. You are asking your pastor, eh, eh, pastor, eh, should I? What should I do? Eh, this, eh, you are not calling my husband, my husband. And the pastor will not join you. Where is your husband? Where is your husband? Fool! Which husband? Tell the pastor your boyfriend, or your, your man friend, your woman friend. You are dragging your, the innocent pastor along to your sin. Now be calling you, where is your husband? Promoting your sin. Promoting your fornication. Promoting to be supporting it. Where is your husband? Where is your wife? Where is your husband? Where is your wife? Of which you are not married. Instead of tell you the truth, go and marry. Go and do the right thing. You are, you are, see, you are see boyfriend and girlfriend committing fornication. If you die now, you go to hell. It's not condemnation. It's not judgment. But that is the standard of God's word. Anyone who dies in sin, whoosh, a fire street. You can't, you can't make negotiation about it. You can only make negotiation when you are alive. And that negotiation is true repentance, genuine repentance. So the choice is yours. If you will repent now, or you will still continue in that life of sin and fornication. So the word of God, it should be your spiritual meat, daily bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Luke 4, 4, Matthew 4, 4. And in Jeremiah 15, verse 16, Jeremiah said, I found the word of God and I ate the word. The word has become a joy and a rejoicing of my heart. Which means the word of God you, in you that you, you practice with, in the part of, a part of holiness and righteousness gives you joy, peace of mind. Joshua 1, 8. 
this book of the Lord, it shall not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day, night. Observe, do it. And it should make you prosper and give you good sources. Which means if you desire prosperity that you want to and be praying for miracle prosperity, the word of God is telling you, observe God's word. Do according to his, his instruction. Then it will make you prosper. It will give you good health. It will give you success. Observe the word. Do it. Do it. Then you get the desired result. But you are not doing it as a believer. You want desired result. But means you go to hell with that desire. So it's better you make adjustment now. You think. Think of your life. Where is your soul going? For years you have been chasing after a shadow. Doing all manner of evil to make money. And yet you have not. Every year you are seeking renewing your, your, your altar. Evil altar. For money's sake. So is that how you continue to renew till Jesus come? And when the judgment will come, you will not repent. If you die, you go to hell. But I pray you will not go to hell. God will rescue you by all means. The Holy Spirit will rescue you. The angels of God will rescue you by all means. In the name of Jesus. I will end with uh, Deuteronomy 28. There are a lot of blessings and cursings. The blessings is for those who obey the word of God in holiness and in righteousness. The blessings are for those. The curses is for those who hear the word, who preach the word, but they are not obedient to the word in holiness and righteousness. That is the curse. You know, sometimes we on our own curse ourselves. We are blaming Satan. We Satan. Is Satan omnipresent or omnipotent? Is Satan omniscience? We on our own curse our own self. We are not blaming, extending the brim to one old woman in the village or one old man family, village people, family, whatever, whatever. But you are the architect of your own problem. You are not even seeing it well. If you want to know who your the enemy is, Go to your mirror and point your finger to your mirror. You, my enemy, who reflects there is your arch enemy. So is that enemy you will fight. The Torah 29, it shall come to pass if you diligently obey, obey, obedient to the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully. The Torah 28, all his commandments which he command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. This scripture sometimes will say, man. When we know we are not living in a path of holiness and righteousness, we say amen. When we say amen to this kind of blessing, it will reverse to cause. So if you want the blessings to be established, then keep your path in holiness and in righteousness. That is when the blessing will flow, overflow. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. He said, blessed shall be in the city, blessed shall be in the country, blessed you shall you be in the fruit of the, your body, the married one. I've seen a, a single, single person praying for a miracle child because you are living a, a, a living a bed of fornication with that boy with that girl you are calling your husband your wife when you know you have not paid your diary you have not do the right thing you are proclaiming my husband my wife my husband my wife Satan have paid you there you take your sense away i've roasted it on the fire even to the essence give you to eat you even add mineral to it you you digest your brain with like a Sarah. you no longer think you no longer think Satan roasted the brain. You no longer think. And you are rejoicing my wife, my husband, my wife, my husband, my wife, my husband. When you have not paid the price, price you know if you are ashamed of yourself. Be ashamed. It is only when you are ashamed of yourself that you know you have sense. Anything you are doing, you are no longer ashamed. It means your brain has been roasted in fire. And Satan gave you the brain. You drank it, digested it with lakasara. Let's tell each other the truth. If you are doing committing sin, you are rejoicing. Yes, I have arrived. I have arrived. You, you are doing self. You are doing video, showing people on social media, posting yourself, posting your nakedness, your brain. Say that don't roast them for fire. It give you it. It can't give you what I digestion. You dissolve it. You can't go digestion away. So, but God, by mercy, will restore another new brain, so that your head go correct. You go think well. If they do wrong, you go by yourself think well, say this is wrong. Now hell fire they take you to not be heaven. No. And this life is short, eh? The one when you go face later, you know the end. So now choice now, now you go make. If now the, the one when you go, you go the fire go burn you to you go smell your body. Now you go go. I'll be the one when you go day under AC. You suffer the fold your leg, fold your hand. All those things when you want to enjoy for here now. It's not even compared to that side. Go the order for anything when you want. The glory will be flowing everywhere. The glory, the glory. 
I will leave us here for sake of time. Let us bow down our head and say, God, show me mercy in any way I've wronged, I've gone out of your way, show me mercy. That sin, that life of sin that I've believed in, Father, show me mercy. Show me mercy, rescue my soul from hell. I don't want my soul to draw it in hell. I want to make heaven at the end. I am your child, Father, show me mercy. Please don't abandon me because of my sin. I have returned to you like that prodigal son. I realize all this while I'll be walking in darkness and this thing will lead me to hell and I don't want to go to hell. Show me mercy. Restore me, Father. Restore me back. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy. Reconnect me back to you. Please show me mercy. By the blood of your son, Jesus, wash away my sins. Genuinely, Father, I repent. Genuinely, Lord, I separate myself from every act of sin, every act of ungodliness. Genuinely, Father, I choose to walk in your way, in your path, so that my soul will not go to hell on the last day. Genuinely, Lord, Father, I choose to follow your path. Help me to keep the path of purity. Help me, Father, to walk in the path of holiness and righteousness. Never not to go back to my vomit again, not to go back to the world. Help me, Lord. Help my soul. Save my soul. Rescue me. Rescue me, Father. Show me mercy. In the name of Jesus. Cover me with your blood. Let your mercy prevail and speak for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And I pray that anyone that I see under the bondage of sin, that Satan is hardening your hearts to repent now. May that bondage of sin be destroyed by the blood of Jesus. May the angels of the Lord rescue you from that bondage of sin. May the Holy Spirit of God rescue you from that bondage of sin now. In the name of Jesus. And you who have confessed Christ and you have asked God to show you mercy. May the Lord show you mercy, because His mercy endures forever. He's faithful and just. May the Lord show you mercy and give you the grace to overcome every life of sin. You will never go back to the world. You will never live a life of sin anymore. May that things of this world, the yoke, the taste, appetite for the things of this world, may it be destroyed in your life in the name of Jesus. May that yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus, Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. I am stopping now because of the Bible study we have. We have Bible study every day on Zoom. So if you are valuable and you have chance, why not? You can join us on the Zoom. That is where you keep your path through the Word of God. You rewash, you wash your heart, you renew your mind. Because in Romans 12, verse 2, don't be conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the word of God. Is what renew your mind. So you join us with European time, 8 p.m. European time. If you are in Africa, depending on the continent you are, Africa, like Nigeria, Africa, is, uh, it will be 7 p.m. But European time, 8 p.m. Join us on the Zoom. The Zoom link is there. It is not about come to my church. It's not my church. I don't have a church. Your pastor don't have a church. It's Jesus who owns the church. So that was the... That was the wrong foundation of men that they have used to divide the body of Christ. Denomination, my church, my church. You don't have a church. Christ owned the church. What is the church? You and I are the church. Denomination have divided the body of Christ. So you don't own a church and say, it's my church. I'm, go I'm not going. It's not my church. I will not listen. It's not my church. I will not join. You don't have a church. That mindset, I pray that by the mercies of God, it shall be destroyed in your life. In the name of Jesus. The Lord shall wash your brain. The Lord shall burn your heart, your mind, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. So the Zoom link is on the Facebook wall. You can get it there to connect, to join to the Zoom link for Bible study. Any day you know you are valuable, you are convenient. It's not a bad, it's not a come to my church. It's not my church. It's the word of the Lord. You know you are valuable. You, your place of worship is not holding that day or this same hour. Why don't you join? It's for your own soul. On that day, that is your pastor that is telling you not to listen to another preacher on the social media, to stop listening, and he's sharing his own on the social media. On that day, he will face his own judgment alone, and you will face your own judgment alone. So better learn sense now. Learn sense now. As coronavirus comes, now, many pastors don't leave their members self. Don't provoke me this night again. The word have remembered me to provoke. Leading many multitude to hell. Tell you don't go there. Don't go and learn the truth. So that because you know the truth, the truth will set you free. They don't want you to be free. They want you to, to keep you in their own bondage. The anger of God is, 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 is coming. It's coming. Anyone who refuses to repent, the anger will fall. 
my church. You don't have a church. It's church of Jesus Christ. So you have your spare time. You know you are valuable. Why don't you rejoice in the word of God? If you are a truly born again child of God, you will rejoice in God's word. Anybody who invites you to the living church, which is the church of Jesus, where they preach holiness and righteousness, preach end time message, you will rejoice to be there. Any pastor who wants to hinder you, God will release his anger because he wants to make your soul to die in hell. God will not allow that to happen. God will not allow that to happen. He doesn't want to preach the right message for you to repent. And he blocked the way. He doesn't want you to pass. He don't want to enter. If you want to go to hell, go to the hell. Look, why are you dragging people along to hell? God is so angry. What is interested is your soul to be saved. Not your body to be saved. And the message to save your soul is not preached. And they block the road. They hold the key. They don't want you to, they don't want to enter. They don't want you who want to enter to enter. They have enslaved many. Indoctrinated many. The anger of God is coming. Claiming my church, my church, my church. Dividing the body of Christ. And as such, they are putting Jesus to public disgrace the second time. Nailing him to the cross. The anger of God is coming. Anyone who wants to put the name of Jesus to public disgrace the second time, heaven will open. The fire of God will fall down as it was in the days of old. And that fire will show someone example to know that God owns this world. I mind my anger. I'm so angry in the spirit. Seeing multitude leading to hell. Don't preach the message that will make multitude to repent. Feed them with milk when they're supposed all to be eating meat. Don't want to tell the truth. Don't want anyone to repent. Don't keep any soul there to die in hell. What is your gain? You are working for Satan then. Give it credit to Satan. Which means you have agreement with Satan. That your secret, uh, secret life will be revealed by fire. Because the men don't want They hate light. Because they know they are, they are that full of darkness, evil. Once the light comes to review that deed. So join us if you are interested. And the prayer night as well. Every night, 9 and 12 a.m. European time. You want to build your spiritual life. To overcome every powers of sin, you need to pray. That is why Jesus said, pray at least one hour. Watch and pray at least one hour. He admonishes us, encourages us to pray that we enter not into temptation. He has encouraged us to pray without ceasing. In ceasing, out of ceasing, always pray. This is the only thing that can deliver man. Don't say my church. Gather multitude and no one is saved among the multitude. Hey! The anger of God is coming. Gather multitude, leading them to hell. Because you choose to go to hell, you have an agreement with Satan. Satan, the members are not aware. So if you really love the people you are talking about, why don't you? There are many times have you care about their soul other than care about this body that will go back to dust. You are most concerned about the body that will go to dust. But the soul that will, that will stand either to make heaven or go to hell, you are not concerned about it. And you say, I love my members. I love my... You, you even have members. You don't have members. It's Jesus' own children. Anyone who named the name of Jesus Christ has become a child of God. And you are a caretaker just to guide them. Teach them the word. Anyone who has little uh, knowledge about the word. So you have to expansive the knowledge of the truth. Expand the word of God to, the, to those people. So that they will have the clear knowledge. You have made yourself Christ God over their life. And you don't want them to know Jesus. You want them to know you. Are you the one? Did you die for anyone? Is your blood even able to save your own, your, your own head? Your blood cannot save your own head. And you want your blood to save other people. Lead them to Christ. The Christ that is able to save their soul. But you have made yourself God in their life. Let them worship you. You kidnapped Jesus. You have kidnapped Jesus. You made yourself God. Well, God bless us. The choice is yours. The word of God has been released. The choice is yours to make. Don't let anyone deceive you. Don't be deceived anymore. Nobody owes your life. God owes your life. He owes your soul. So don't be deceived anymore. Don't be deceived anymore. The time is short. If you are not careful, you will see your soul lie the hell. I pray that you will not go to hell. God will rescue your soul from that bondage of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for tonight. Give you glory. Let your name be glorified. Honor you, adore you. I pray, O oh God, our Father, that you help us to walk according to your word, according to your way. Help us to do your way at all times. May your word be established in our heart. We pray the word will enlighten us, open our eyes of understanding, to know our area and where we are going. Is it heaven or hell? By your word, enlighten us, Father. Open our eyes 
that our brain that has been revised, restore it back, restore our mind for us to think well. Help us, Father, by your Spirit, lead us. By your Spirit, Father, lead us to the right place. Lead us to the right place so that at the end, heaven will be our home. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless and keep us. May cause his face to shine upon us. May he be gracious unto us and bless us on every area. In Jesus' glorious name, shalom. Together, let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall keep dwelling in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. So join us now if you are interested. God bless you. By the grace of God, tomorrow you will see me here, your brother, your friend, your colleague. God bless you.